Hello and welcome to uh, the second part of uh, hypothesis testing. Uh, this is chapter two, 7 of S2. Um, yes, yeah, so let's crack on with another example. So let's have this time x being the number of days uh, that it rains on in, say, the next month. Um, let's have that this month is a 30 day month because we have a, to have a nice table with uh, n equal to 30. Let's say the probability of it raining each day we believe is 0.45. Um, somewhat optimistic for the UK, I suppose. So our null hypothesis is that probability is 0.45. Now, we've dealt with the alternative hypothesis being bigger than and smaller than in the last video. So let's just go for it and just not being equal to 0.45. We're not sure whether it's going to be more likely or less likely than that to rain, but we think maybe one of those is, is likely. Um, maybe it's more likely to be true. And let's do a 5% level of significance test. So, um, okay, so this is different the last time because last time we just looked one way or the other way depending on what this sign said, if it was bigger than we looked for the probability being bigger than a certain number uh, or if it was less than we looked for the probability of or it being less than a certain number. Uh, now we've got not equal to, we've got to deal with both cases, bigger than and smaller than. Let's say it actually rains uh, 19 times in that month. So what we need to do is look at the probability of x being bigger than 19 and the probability of x being less than 19 and see if either those two things is um, unlikely to happen. But we don't compare them to 5% anymore because that would be 5% above and 5% at the bottom giving us 10% chance of it being wrong. We want to be a 5% chance of it being wrong. Therefore, we need 2.5% at the top and 2.5% at the bottom. So we look at now 2.5% on either side and compare both of these to 2.5. You know, that way, keeping the total significance to being 5%. Uh, let's work out these ones there. So this is the probability of x being less than 18. So it's just like a normal binomial question. Go back to my uh, table where n is equal to 30. There it is, n30. We're looking at x being equal to 18. Go across to the 0 0.45 column, uh, which is just there. That's 0.9666. Mm, what a lovely number, 0. It's like 1 minus 0. 0.9666, which is the same thing, of course, as 0. 0.0334, or 3.34%. So quite unlikely um, that the probability is 0.45 and it's rained 19 times, only 3% chance that could have happened. Um, more likely then that probably is 0.45 and we got less than 19 because less than 19 is a straight lookup. Back to the table, n is 30 down to 19 across to 0 0.45 and 19 is 0 0.9862. So in practice we probably wouldn't do this one because we wouldn't need to look up a 98% chance. Um, so that one is not important, we look at the smallest percentage. What we're asking now, you see, is uh, what's the probability if the probability of um, our value x being bigger than our observation or the probability of our x being smaller than our observation? If that's really unlikely, if either of those percentages, if either one is uh, less than, well, not 5%, but 2.5%, if either one is uh, less than 2.5%, then we would reject uh, null hypothesis. It means the probability is not 0.45. We don't know if it's bigger or smaller, but it's one of the two. Um, if not, we keep it. So let's have a look here. So that one there isn't less than 0.25. It's bigger than 2.5%. And this one here is definitely bigger than 2.5%. That's why you need to look at the smaller percentage because if one's bigger, then the other one's got to be bigger. Um, so we should keep uh, H0. So we stick with P equals 0.45. It's interesting, right? Because if we'd have chosen P to be less than 0.45, then the 5% level of significance test would have told us to reject H0. So it makes a difference whether you specify beforehand whether you want the probability to be less than 0.45, bigger than 0.45, or not equal to 0.45 will affect the outcome. Um, and you could then go back and do the same test now 
being less than 0.45, I can get a reject response. So this alternative hypothesis here is important. It influences the outcome of the test because you're comparing the H0, the null one, to the alternative. And this is not a better alternative. Like less than 0.45 would be a better alternative and then it would tell you to reject. So it's important to pay attention to what is going up from here. It's not just testing the H0, it's testing the H0 in favour of um, H1. It's comparing the two, if you can see what I mean. Um, the last thing I want to do on here is uh, a Poisson one because it's perfectly possible to do this for Poisson distributions as well. Um, I'm sitting in my window in my room and I'm looking at the number of buses going past in the hour. So let's have a uh, white equals number of buses passing by my house in an hour. Now, well, our main bus route, so um, the number of buses that can pass per hour normally is about three, three per hour. So we can say that y is Poisson distributed um, at a three. So that's our uh, h zero is that lambda equals three. Now I'm counting, and I'm not seeing very many at the minute. So this would be a colon, not an equal sign. Um, and so I think this is probably actually slightly uh, more than a it is nowadays they've reduced the bus routes um, so we're going over H1 being that lambda is less than uh, 3 and we'll, go, we'll do a 5% level of significance again um, and I've counted the last hour how many people came past um, and it turned out that it was just 1 uh, let's see if this is, um, this is significant or not um, so we've got to look at the probability that y is less than our reserve value 1, um, which is a nice straightforward look up on my uh, Poisson table if I can locate that for us. So here's my Poisson table. I'm looking for... Oh, no, that's not Poisson table. Here's my Poisson table. Uh, we're looking at lambda being 3. And we're looking at the value of uh, 1 on 3, which is 0 0.1991. Where is it gone? Um, yeah, there. So 0 0.1991, which is otherwise known as 1991 percent So this is bigger than 5%. So it seems like we should keep H0. We don't reject it if it's a very really small percentage, therefore meaning it's really unlikely, and therefore more likely that H1 is true. We're keeping it because it's bigger than 5%. So this is the idea about hypothesis testing. You work out the probability of this thing happening, and then if it's a big probability, you keep the original idea. If it's a small probability, you reject that idea in favour of a new idea. There is one more video to go. In the last video, we'll look at um, critical regions because the minute we're having to have an observation, it'd be nicer if we um, could know what number I would need here for it to be um, a reject answer. So we'll look at critical regions in the next video.